Hey YouTube history fans, it's your history teacher again here, Mr. Terry, with another React video. So we're going to jump in in just a second. Now this video was voted on by our awesome patrons over at Patreon. So once a week I put up a poll that all the patron pledgers can vote in to get a video because we're featured on the channel. And this week this is what they chose. They chose History of World War I in one take by a channel called History Bombs. Now that, that name kind of seems familiar. I've not seen anything from the channel, but I think people have... Um, have recommended to me quite a bit but yeah so I'm, I'm always excited to try a new channel because i don't know what to expect i don't know what their style is you know what what really they're going for so um i think it'll be a lot of fun um this also world war one uh, if you know me world war one is my easily one of my favorite topics to talk about it's on a very short list of my favorite topics you know to look at so this sounds cool so in one take i don't know if they're just going to do like film one walkthrough of it or something I, I really have no idea but we'll go ahead and check it out now make sure that you go and visit the original video link it's down below um, in the description so be sure you click that give that the view time and all that stuff support the awesome channels that are putting amazing content out here and i don't know give you my thoughts reactions add anything that i think i need to and that'd be awesome if you want to uh, get involved in future patreon polls too links down below links to some other stuff as well but let's go ahead and get started History bombs. Okay. History of World War One. One take. Okay. It kind of reminds me of um. Yeah, I saw nineteen seventeen the movie. Awesome, love that. It's going to go down probably my top three favorite war movies ever. But that was designed to be shot in one take, and that was really cool. That was, I don't know if that's what they're trying to go for here, but I always thought that was a really cool thing because um, it really made it immersive. Oh, snap. One bullet from a young Serbian's gun has Ooh, good for you. For World War One, But how did one shot prove so lethal as to kill over 17 million people? It's oh, it's a, it's a rap or a music. It's a song. So are these guys, is this like a music channel? Sort of, or is this just one off? Is that what History Bombs does? So they're doing like a song. <laughs> All right, so that's Gavrilo Princip, the uh, teen uh, teenagers, uh, Bosnian technically, but uh, was the one who assassinated the Archduke, if you know the story, which started the snowball effect leading to wars declaring war on, or sorry, countries declaring war on each other. Let's set the scene. Late 19th century Germany was booming. True. And there were signs of a storm brewing. Her Emperor Kaiser Wilhelm II had plans to teach his rivals a lesson. Now Deutschland is high, but I'll take a higher. One word, two syllables, empire. Like Britain, I for rule sea and land. Watch out for this a fatherland. It's okay, I, 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 I'm always afraid to, to chime in because, you know, it's my thing, kind of chiming in with, with details. I'm afraid to do that in songs because they move so fast. But... Hopefully that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, one thing he mentioned that's really important was at the late 19th century, so towards the end of the 1800s, Germany was becoming an industrial giant. In fact, by the end of the century, they had passed Britain, who was the first you know industrial nation, and passed them up in in uh, in production. Um, they especially come the the second industrial revolution, as it's called, kind of the late 1800s, were just exploding and. It kind of makes sense that they may want to. Because one thing about industrial nation is imperialism is directly tied to industrialization because uh, usually it's about resources and trade routes and um, all that kind of stuff that helps fuel an industrial nation. So like being an empire for a lot of industrial nations was synonymous with being industrialized. So in Germany was on that track for sure. It's worth pointing out that the Kaiser was mentally unstable, but unfortunately <laughs> for the rest of Europe, he was in charge. Germany's name is a powerful dude. To take hey Russia, have you heard this guy? I'm thinking of putting my army on standby. I know France and Russia. Me nausea, and now he signed an agreement with Austria. Russia and France allies, if you know the kind of um got Entente and the, the Central Powers, so the big when when the war breaks out, these pre-war alliances that were happening russia france great britain and then you had uh germany and austria hungary the big alliance ottoman empire actually comes in a little bit later so tell her when we've got your back we'll be here if the kaiser attacks it was against this yep. backdrop that got i got your back you got my back young serbian nationalist shot dead archduke franz ferdinand the heir to the austrian throne setting off a terrible chain of events are you ready 
Let's okay, they're going to go through it. Cool. Austria and Germany attacking to Serbia, who allies with Russia, didn't mention that earlier. And Russia get ready to advance. And that brings in their pals, yup, France. Germany attack France as quick as they can. Adopts an approach called the Schlieffen Plan. They go through Belgium. Awful decision. As Belgium have friends, namely Great Britain. Okay, I always like talking about the Schlieffen Plan. So the Schlieffen Plan was a already predetermined or pre... Not necessarily determined, but... Uh, uh, pre-crafted sort of military plan because the idea was is what if germany has to fight a two-front war which is very possible as you see on the map they are centrally located with notable enemies for them russia and france and if one would if germany understood if they were to attack one or get involved with one it would bring in the other thus bringing in a two-front war so the whole idea of the schaffen plan was how do you make the best out of what really is a crappy situation, which is to have a two-front war? It's You've got to take out one of the sides as early as possible. So the debate was kind of this. Take out the one that is going to be ready first, right? And then you can do that before the other comes fully online, right? Now, the idea was Russia would take longer to mobilize. Bigger country. Bigger army actually had the biggest standing army in Europe, around 6 million, I believe, at the outbreak of the war. So go into an all-in assault on France and try to finish that off before you get to Russia. So then the question is, how do you take France out as quickly as possible? Well, everyone knows the epicenter of France is Paris right here. You take Paris, you pretty much take France. So then it's, how do you take Paris quick? Well, you would think, all right, you just invade right over here, the German-French border. Well, that's pretty well defended. Belgium, a smaller nation and not as well defended could be a quicker route. And that's exactly what the Schlieffen plan said, was you're going to go through Belgium, get to Paris, and then France would fall pretty quickly. And in that meantime, you'd be able to fight Russia, basically avoiding a two-front war. You can make two single-front wars separately. But we know that doesn't happen because uh, France was able to defend itself. Russia actually mobilized way quicker than anybody would have thought. And one thing that the Schlieffen plan had to or whatever taken account was uh, if the British would come in. Um, Belgium was notably a big ally of um, of the British as they did a lot of business and stuff like that together. And I wasn't quite sure, at least in the German perspective, if Bel uh, the British would care enough about Belgium to intervene if Belgium got invaded. So they were willing to roll that the, you know those dice. Uh, and that's exactly what happened, though. Um, the UK did come in because that was the final final nail, the final straw for Britain waiting to join or at least declare a side in this war and that's that's what happened so then you do get uh all three of these yellow countries here involved all right i'm talking too much now let's join the advance with the first british troops fighting in france so they're doing like the one take this is cool this is really cool this is cool they made their little November 1914, 400 miles of barbed wire and mud. This is cool. How'd they get a little... They dig out a trench here? Australia, Africa, and India, but still more troops were needed. Yeah, they call it World War. Is, there wasn't necessarily tons of fighting all over the, the world. I mean, there kind of was. It's more, though, like... When we really talk about it being a world war was... Since this is the age of imperialism, these nations are all at war. These European nations... They're all war with each, um, with each other, have empires across the world. And what they were doing was utilizing the resources of their uh, different parts of or their their different parts of their empire. So if you got the British, you can utilize places like Canada or Australia, right, um, or India. And that's what they're doing. So you're bringing in your colonies into the war, too. And that's really why it can be uh, called a world war. Men of Britain, there's much to do. Your time is now. Your country needs you. Sir, we've just had Fruitland news from Gallipoli. Time, huh? uh, yes, against the Turk, a resounding victory. Failure. No, sir, 500,000 casualties and a telegram. Send help, please. Oh, dear. If you know the famous story about the Gallipoli, um, the one thing that was bad about the sort of alliance between Russia, France, and uh, Great Britain was the fact that geographically they're spread apart. They couldn't actually control each other. Germany can definitely control the northern Atlantic kind of part, more Baltic area, and, and restrict trade there. And then out in the Mediterranean, the big help for Austria, Hungary, and Germany was when the Ottoman Empire joined, who has a long history with Russia as well, fighting them, their enemies. But uh, going through kind of Gallipoli region, basically trying to get from the... Uh, the Mediterranean into the Black Sea 
would and to be able to make that connection would be very useful for the British and the French because they could they could resupply the Russians. They could actually communicate and connect that way. Uh, but you have to go through the Ottoman Empire. And famously, Winston Churchill, who was um, administrator in the Navy at this time, ordered the invasion of the Gallipoli, that region that you want to take so you can connect the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. And it famously was a massive, huge failure as the Ottoman Empire was able to repel it with, as you saw, thousands and thousands of casualties and basically derailed Winston Churchill's career for another decade. Back in the trenches, there was more to fear as chemical weapons began gas to time. Gas, gas, and exit. No mask, a damn cloth's better than nothing. Sir, I can't see the gas things and fire. Come here, soldier, let's get you to a nurse. Behind the front line, volunteer nurses tended to the injured soldiers. Both at home and on the front line, women made tremendous contributions to the war effort. Hold still, deep breaths, I'll soon be through. It's barbaric what they've done to you. Oh, thank you, miss, you're a real pearl. God, these trenches, no place for a girl. Neither are they fit for a man, but we're here to help the best we can. And who do you think manufactured your gun? Us girls will see this True. war is won. No <laughs> Yeah, a big part of this war was this is considered a total war. What a total war is and how that's different. It's when the resources of your nation are completely prioritized to the war effort. The war isn't just something going off on the side of your society and culture. It's it's a major part. The number one priority in your country and even by civilians was the war effort. So with so many men, you know, millions going off into war. Uh, women were basically at home, the ones working in factories. Yeah, like she said there, they're the ones uh, making guns and making other types of equipment. A lot of things that brought women into the uh, workplace, a lot for the worst time, uh, for the first time. And they, you know, performed very well. And which also leads to the sort of women's civil rights movement you're going to see right after the war. Places like in America where women after the war were pushing for uh uh, right to vote and prohibition and things like that and there's a lot of different um, reasons behind that though but they, yeah that was one of the big things but you saw the trench warfare and all that gas being a huge part of it as the idea was trying to get your enemy out of your trench it's why world war one was so devastating was because these technologies were so deadly and they also kept people from being able to make any offensive pushes which is why especially like in the western front the lines of the war changed very little over those four years 1916 saw terrible losses on the western front the germans advanced to verdun and the british went forward to the song but neither battle proved decisive meanwhile on the eastern front the russians were achieving some successes <laughs> sir news from the russian army me that pigeon's flown a long way let me guess they've been pushed back no actually they've had a good crack general brusilov makes good progress is why attacks put Fritz under stress his advance no less than 60 miles Superb, great news and last oh hang on and now his attack's been stalled German reserves have been called oh blast it would take new tactics and technology to break the deadlock on either front and I'm sure they're gonna get to it the war in the Eastern Front goes terribly for the Russians um, also indirectly helping to support the Russian Revolution um, which happened in 1917 actually two of them one in spring one in the fall that eventually led to Russia pulling out of the war, which uh, put so much pressure on the West. But luckily for the Allies, then the United States joined in um, just as Russia was leaving. In 1917, Germany made a fatal calculation by pursuing a ruinous naval strategy. This war has gone on long enough. It's time for Deutschland to get tough. The Allies need their post to stay alive. Cut these off and they cannot survive. German U-boats attacked Allied shipping to cut off supplies. Pissed off the Americans. Attacked American ships, and in response, the United States declared war on Germany. It would take another year, however, for American troops to actually arrive in Europe. Got to train in the meantime, a Russian revolutionary seized his moment. All right, before they get in, probably get into Lenin here. But the American perspective, right? America had stayed out of the war as far as combat went, but America was doing business with the Allies, right? Britain, um, Britain especially. And Germany obviously doesn't like that because America's sitting there declaring neutrality. But from the other side of that, you can see if, if can a country truly be neutral if they are doing business, especially wartime business, with your enemy, right? You can't really see it that way. Germany will take the same perspective under Adolf Hitler in World War II where it's like, no, America's sitting here and they're saying they're neutral or whatever and they're sitting here doing business with the British and all that. So, yeah, but uh, what... There's multiple things that brought America into the war. That's one thing that uh, a lot of people don't understand is there was nothing like a Pearl Harbor specifically, an, an overnight pos position shift for the Americans in World War One. It was multiple things. Um, you might have heard of the Zimmerman Telegram, which is a proposed 
potential deal between Germany and Mexico uh, to basically kind of distract the Americans, help the Mexico potentially um, lose territory they lost the United States in the Mexican-American War. But then also, yeah, the repeated attacks by German U-boat submarines on uh, American merchant ships was also something Americans thought was not very justified either. Okay, but that, that brings the American, which again was a very important thing to happen because the Russians were leaving and the Americans were able to come in. But they also said it took a year for the Americans to get in there. They declare war in 1917, but really don't show up till the beginning of next year. And that's because America basically had no standing army at that time. And were able to bring, I think, 2 million troops eventually. They had to do a draft immediately and train them uh, very quickly. And I, I actually think a year is, is a pretty decent time to put as many troops as America was able to get a couple million um, in less than a year. My Russian brothers, listen in. Let me introduce myself. Vladimir Lenin. I promise to take this country far. But first, we need to kick out the Tsar. Good, that was easy. Now everyone's equal. We'll have bread, land, and peace for the people. Bye, Nikki. I think Mother Russia's had enough of this war. I'll meet with the Germans to settle this goal. The meeting took place in November 1917, and Russian land was divided by Germany into independent states, including the Ukraine. With Russia now out of the war, the Germans moved all efforts yep. to the Western Front. It's not a two-front war anymore. Effort in the spring of 1918. Ultimately, the offensive failed, and at this pivotal moment, the Americans finally arrived. Hey, what's up? No photographs, please. We got your memo, and geez, things have gotten out of hand. <laughs> Good thing you called the American up guys. Sam. The enemy had better reach for the skies. We'll light it up like the Fourth of July. Die, you idiot. By May 1918, 200,000 American troops were arriving per month, and after withstanding the German offensive, new technology and tactics proved decisive for the. This Allies. is a great. Well produced. This is it. We have orders to make the hit. Keep behind the tanks and use the Lewis gun. A creeping barrage will shatter the HUD. Our planes will protect from the skies, then we'll hold the line until support arrives. Finally, the Allies got some traction, putting the Germans out good, of action. Good. At 11 a.m. on the 11th... You notice the kind of multicultural nature of the um, British Army? Because they, again, were recruiting from um, and bringing in troops from, you know, places like South Asia. You know, so it was, yeah, a very multicultural army for the British. In fact, I believe more non-British, there are more non-British soldiers than British soldiers, native British. November, the guns fell silent upon German surrender. All in all, a tragic loss. Europe secured, but at what cost? November 11th, 1918, 11 forever in debt. 100 years hence, lest we forget. Oh, they did, yeah. 100 years, we've passed it. That was cool. I would love to show this in my class. They had to put a lot of money and stuff into this, though. Cool. This was great. So I didn't know, actually, that it would be like a song like that. You could see in one take, they kind of panned around. Kind of 1917 esque there that was cool um to do something like that requires so much timing like you saw there that you know they have to pan around the camera and time all that right they had little explosions and stuff going on they had the the gas going and then some of the the, the gunfire and all that stuff so it probably took a long time and it was about what six minutes so that's a long that's a long time to try to do in one take so that's that's super impressive i'm impressed with these guys is this what they do are they are they like history music or is that just maybe this video? Um, but that was cool. So they hit, man, they hit the major points, to be honest. At least like the, a lot of the major motives and just real, hit some of the, the, the big important things, the turning points of the war and stuff like that. I thought it was a great job to pack into six minutes into something um, like this and kind of entertaining that way. I thought it was fantastic. I think this would be great for my classroom. This would be fun just to pull out. You know, beginning of class, maybe we're getting ready for a test or something. Maybe at the end of class or something, you know, just to just to throw in there. I think that'd be uh, pretty enjoyable because there's a lot of things here, though, that it'd probably be helpful. Because I always wonder with videos like this, some videos are really good to show at the beginning. And those are always great to introduce things. And there's good ones at the end to kind of review with. I'm not sure with this one. There are a bunch of things. I mean, you could kind of do it before or after um, in a way, but as introductory. Um 
That'd be very cool. All right, well, this was fantastic. I really like this. Um, I think that's cool. I thought it was so well done. These guys, are, these guys are awesome. So please, please support them by going down, clicking the link, subscribe to them, uh, give them the view time and all that stuff. And I, I also always appreciate when people do World War One stuff. I've repeatedly said on this channel that World War One often gets overshadowed by World War Two. Mostly because of bigger casualties, it's easier to study because the lines are much more clear. Causes and effects are very clear. Where World War One, really, you really didn't have that. Not very good reasons for it happening. Didn't really solve anything, and of course, just kind of blends into World War Two. So, I like studying World War One just because it is more complex in that. And little things like this are are very very cool. So, all right. Well, let me know what you think of this. Um, if you thought this was a cool thing, um, yeah, let me know. Again, shout out to our patrons uh, for. First off, pledging to the channel. If you want to get involved in that, there's multiple tiers. We can get certain stuff. There's merch, other things like that. But the baseline, no matter where you pledge at, even starting a dollar, one dollar a month, you're going to get access to the polls, which is going to get uh, videos kind of fast-tracked onto the site here. Uh, with that, there's links to other stuff, my gaming channel, other things that are going on. Join our Discord server and our community over there. Great place to hang out and talk history. All right, with that, we'll see you all next time. Bye.